Hinnehoff Winery, located in Bryan, Texas, is a short drive from Texas A&M. They are part of the Harvest Host Network, offering free RV parking. We stayed overnight with electric service available at no additional charge. The 26-acre vineyard is a backdrop for the Villa Bed and Breakfast Romantic Getaway. The covered patio is a perfect meeting place. The lake is surrounded by landscape gardens. Pathways wind through the area where you can stroll, relax, and enjoy a glass of your favorite wine. The Winer and Resort offers wedding and proposal packages for that very special day. While we were visiting, our wedding was underway. The wine tasting room showcases their immense selection of award-winning wines. The Vintage House Fine Dining Restaurant offers courses prepared to be expertly paired with a style of wine. The Gourmet Food and Gift Shop offers wine accessories, personalized gifts, labels, and apparel. You can choose from wines crafted from 30 varieties all grown in Texas. You can try before you buy. The gift shop is a stepping off point for the winery tour. Here are some excerpts. Vineyards. Um, we about have about 26 and a half acres of vineyards here on our property. Um, right here is where we grow the bulk of our grapes. These are all Lindois grapes, and they're actually used to make our pork. And the reason for that is these grapes actually bring the natural red juice to these only grapes in the world that does that. Um, and, and it's also a naturally sweeter grape, which makes it easier to get the higher alcohol to use into um, But could anybody tell me what these black hoses here are for? Water. Water? What does it do? <laughs> so it's actually a drip irrigation system. So if you guys didn't know, um, vines and grapes actually grow better under a drought-like condition. So that drip irrigation system actually helps us manually put these vines into a drought-like condition. And um, the reason for that is, is if it gets too much water, it causes the leaves to grow more. And then the leaves will then block the grapes from getting sunlight. And then that will ruin the whole process of us trying to get the higher alcohol content out of these grapes. Um, and could anybody tell me what the rose bushes in front of the vineyards are for? So traditionally, traditionally in Italian winemaking, they would plant rose bushes at the foot of every vineyard. And the reason for that was is because the rose bushes would actually pick up diseases before the vineyard would. So they would go and tear out the rose bushes, and then the vineyard wouldn't get affected, and then they just replant it. Um, but with the development in science and technology, that's not really necessary anymore. Um, so we just do it for more of a tradition. tradition. But this is our production space. So whenever we get um, our grapes from Lubbock imported in here on a refrigerated truck, and then when we harvest our vineyard, um, all the grapes come here to this spot, and then our production crew and our winemakers sort through the grapes. They get rid of the bad ones, keep the good ones, and then from there, it's put into our destemmer and crusher. Can anybody tell me what that does? <laughs> Gets rid of these yeah, stems. And it crushes the grapes. And then we'll actually start with the red wine process. Um, so from there, uh, we take it out of the simmering crusher and move it over to the bladder press. And then that presses the grapes down just to the point where it doesn't crush the seeds. You don't want to crush those seeds because that'll actually make your wine taste kind of funky. Um, and then we actually do keep the grape skins with the red the red grapes. Could anybody tell me why? Um. Give them more robust tasty flavor? Yeah. Right there. Yes. So actually, the only grapes that actually bleed a natural red juice are going to be our Lenoir grapes here. Every other red grape will bleed a white juice. And so we need to mix those grape skins in there with that to give the red wine its color. All right. So we're going to do the same five S's with this wine. So if everybody holds this one up. You can very clearly see that this is a white wine. Am I wrong? <laughs> um, doing the site is also really good to tell the age of the wine. So with white wine, if you look at it, um, after you pour it out of the bottle, um, it's actually going to get darker as it ages. So if anybody's ever had like a really old champagne, you'll notice it's more of a gold color instead of a white color. And that's because it gets darker inside the bottle. And then with red wine, it actually does the opposite. So red wine is going to get lighter as it ages. In the ideal age range to drink white wine is going to be five to seven years, and then with red, ten to twelve. 